hey, you probably click that thumbnail because you're looking at these machines and going, hey, I really want to make those sounds, but that's a little expensive for me and I'm looking for something along the lines of free and something I can run on my computer. And really, I do use a variety of free software synths that I use on my computer all the time for my type of work. I just wanted to give you five options that you can go and find because they're really useful. I do use them quite a lot in my work and they cover a variety of different synthesis methods which really get into the majority of the sounds that we make with synthesizers. So if you're interested, definitely stick around and we'll get straight into it. Alright, I'm here with Renoise, which is the main way I like making music on the computer, but really it's just to hold the sounds that I'm going to be talking about. And number one off the bat is the Tau Noise Maker. Anything by Tau is really good, so I do recommend you check out their website. But the Noise Maker is a subtractive synthesizer that is very like basic but it does a lot of the stuff that we need and is very capable so every time I have someone that's new to synthesis come up to me and ask for like what's a soft synth I can try first up I would recommend this one because for one it's got a lot but it's in a very simple layout like we've got two oscillators we also have a sub oscillator we have basic LFO controls a master mixer plus we have a really nice filter with a whole bunch of different options as well and an ADSR to control the sound and really like that's all you really need for a subtractive synthesizer and it will go through and you'll learn about how to construct subtractive synthesis patches on this machine but on top of that we do have like a bit of an EG curve creator as well as more minute controls on the synthesizer so and another thing I really enjoy about this one like usually these patches are mono sounds so we actually have access to make it a poly synthesizer Synthesizer. And it was made during a time when it was like very optimized as well. So you can have quite a few of these running in a VST sort of setup. And really the sound itself is pretty good. So I really enjoy it. But it's usually something I always come back to. So if I need like that analog sound, I'll usually throw one of these on top. So I would highly recommend this one as your first synthesizer to go grab. All right, so we've got a really nice big subtractive synth sound and usually when it comes to making this, I'll have like samples of drums and that to go along with it. And pretty much every door has a way to handle its own samples. So go look at that. But there is a really interesting way how samples can be used as a synthesizer. And that leads me into my number two, which is Vital. So this one is a wavetable based synthesizer. And a wavetable is pretty much like a sample, but it has lots of little frames set up inside of it. So if we look at this one up here, if I scrub through the waveform, it's actually using it to create windows to create a particular type of sound. So it does look like these 3D planes, so we can get a sense of what the sound is doing and like you do have layered stacks on these in Vital and it does do a really good job playing with them and Vital itself is such a powerful synthesizer it's got a lot of modulation options like we've got four LFOs we've got some randomizers um, different randomized styles my favorite Perlin noise uh, we'll say that and alongside that modulation we have a lot of different ways that we can manipulate our sample to create a different tone and it's super powerful when you start getting into it like there's a matrix that we can sort of create all the modulation sources which sort of reflect on these like little bubbles around that we can control how they respond so I can see that one's controlling the filter uh, you can get really advances as well like that's its own thing uh, but it has a really nice effects list as well so like good delays reverbs distortions filters uh, you can layer up all those if you want to create the sound that you want you're not relying on your door to do it and one thing that I really enjoy about Vital is it's got a really nice way to edit the actual waveform so it's got a few tools in here like I know when I'm making uh, wavetables with these machines I'll create like wavetable windows so I can actually control like how they fall in and fall out so I'm not getting any clipping on the corners so overall I would definitely recommend getting vital just for that wavetable sound like uh, I'll just close that out if we listen to this by itself <laughs> So Vital does tend to lean towards more of those harsher tones. It's really easy to create those. So more for electronic music, I have used this to make some really nice organic sounds as well. So 
definitely put this one in your list of what free synthesizers to get. Now between analog sounds and wavetables, that's about 60% of my work. Like I do like making an oscillator and then using wavetables to mangle up that sound. But there are points where I need a very particular machine, but the sort of routing between the different components don't really exist. And this is where it comes into number three, which is VCV rack. This is a virtual modular, a very uh, nice way of not having a money pit to like pour into modules. Cause like if you were to go out and buy them, the cheapest ones you'll probably find is about two to $300. And we can create any sort of synthesizer that we want. So I've made like a little basic patch here to demo it. And I really like doing things where I have modulators, modulating modulators to create different tones. So I've created like a little sequence and I'm just having random trigger off like the different cutoff. A little bit of delay same thing with the analog setup but really vcv rack is a open source platform so a lot of people develop modules for it a lot of them are free too so you can sort of design an idea for a patch and then test it out so if i just turn up the volume, i can start playing with things and it's a really nice way to explore your rack without having to commit to the process. Like when I first started, like I understood certain things like, like what an LFO was and what an oscillator was, but there's a whole variety of modules. And really it was overwhelming to think, oh, like I need to get all these different elements that could cost over a well amount over a thousand dollars. But here I can test and explore different ideas, but I can use this as a space where I can sort of create a synth that doesn't really exist before give it a test, I can record the output of this and create a whole bunch of samples as well. So I would definitely recommend this as your number three to explore with. All right, you're probably seeing a bit of a theme here because what we're doing is creating like a really nice buzzy sound and then using filters and that to take away from that sound. But what happens when you start adding on top of that? And this comes up to my number four synth, which is called uh, Dext. Now Dext is a very authentic replication of the DX7. So if you ever seen one, very fancy synthesizer from the eighties, very revolutionary in its sound like pretty sure you would have heard something like that in some movie or in a game and yeah it has a very unique way of creating sound so it's additive synthesis but mainly focusing on frequency modulation so what that means is we create like our sine wave and then we have carrier sine waves that make the sound and then we have modulating sine waves that like change up that first one by controlling its frequency and the way that these interact with each other are controlled by these algorithms down here and as you can probably tell by that panel it is a very complex way of making sounds but really it has a lot of potential to create some cool tones like you have those very authentic like 80s stuff but really a lot of the buzziness and the harshness that comes through with fm has been used in a lot more modern fr uh, used in a lot more modern electronic music so i definitely would recommend getting this one and having a play but the way i like to use it is like i've spent a bit of time searching around for different carts so the dx7 did have like a cart system on the back and then back in the day people used to make a lot of different sounds for it so you can they're pretty much presets but if you jump on and look through internet archives you can find a lot of those authentic tones as well as there's a few that popped up recently so i sort of use this as like a rompler to get into the sound that i'm looking for but i do tend to like if i get a sound that's close to what i want i'll get in there and start tweaking so it's probably one of the more harder synthesizers to learn and it definitely deserves its own video but really i would definitely recommend picking up decks for that fm sound Now we're up to number five and I would recommend that you do grab those first four because they really do their each individual thing really well. But this fifth one is called Surge and if you know about it, it is a hybrid synthesizer. So what that means is what they've done is they've managed to capture all those different synthesizer methods in one synthesizer. So we've got like our classic and modern saw waves and square two so we can do that subtractive stuff. 
we've got wavetables, we've got FM, we can route a whole bunch of these different parts together in different ways. And it's just got a massive way of connecting everything. So it's very capable of creating a whole bunch of different sounds. It's got a library of different sort of tones that we can use to color our sounds. Like we've got reverbs, we've got delays and different effects. And really, it's a really nice interface to play with as well. And like... <laughs> got a really nice sound engine and super capable of creating a whole bunch of different things so really as they say it's a hybrid synthesizer so it's like sort of fits in with a whole bunch of stuff but because it's got so many different avenues to approach to create the patch that you're looking for it does get a little bit scary so when it's like i say go use the tower one verse it does give you all the understanding of how each of those different sound engines work so when you do come into a synthesizer like this you're like oh okay so this is how it all works together instead of trying to figure out each of the different parts but what i like about this one too is like if we would come to like the square wave it's got a bunch of different modulation options and we can actually see what is modulating as well. So we can do like a nice hex tooth uh, sound. So it's combining the square and uh, triangle and that's an oscillator I really like getting and really I just did a few clicks and got to there anyway. So yeah, it's one of those synths that I would definitely recommend getting your hands on. Another big important part of Surge that I really enjoy is if I can disable the mute right now and come into that, I can actually record the audio input. So I can use this as a way to mangle samples as well and create some new and interesting tones. And really that is the list. So in the end, I hope that's given you a bit of food for thought because like these are really nice machines and it would be great to access them. But really you can achieve a lot with these machines like having a nice little MIDI controller and being able to tweak the settings and understand how these synthesizers work. It's going to give you a lot of that sort of grounding knowledge so you can go in and make the sounds that you want and also experiment and create different sounds as well. And like I didn't really cover samples in this one because really most stores cover samples in their own way. So I would just recommend you go look at that but really when you pair samples with these machines you can create a whole bunch of different stuff like it's covering a variety of those different sound methods so you're going to end up with a variety of different sound content so really good to play with so in the end if you did like this one definitely give it that thumbs up because it does tell the algorithm to point this video to other people people that are probably looking to create those sort of synth sounds looking at vsts and didn't know which one to pick up and also, if you have any comments or queries, please feel free to leave them down below. It really does help out. And like, I do try and be down there and answer all comments anyway. And in the end, if you did like this one, I do have a synthesizer channel. So if you want to stick around, I look forward to seeing you next time.